A lot of us are gonna be going back to school soon. Is that true, yes or no? Some of us are going to college for the first time. How many of you guys are going to college for the first time? Shout out Maya because she is right in the camera frame, so like, she, we are just, we're just getting a nice view of her face right now. No, it was right on cue because I was talking about people going to college for the first time, so we got, we got you. So again, who's going, to, who, who's going, who's going for the college for the first time? Again, okay. And people, everybody going back to high school, right? Now, a lot of us are going back into our, in the fall time, we get back into our rhythms and our routines. Um, this week was my first week back in the office for my job because a lot of my job, I'm driving around to different places, but this time we're back in the office, getting back in the routines of sitting at a computer screen for eight hours a day, waste of your time. And then we're getting back into the rhythm of the basketball season, right? And whenever we're going to fall time, I always ask myself, why am I doing these things? Right, do you ever ask yourself that when you're going to school and you're just like, you had a great summer and you're like, I gotta go back to school, why am I doing this? Anybody ever been there before? You just gotta, you ask yourself, you reevaluate. I used to ask myself, why do I gotta get up at 5.30 in the morning every day to go to school when I was in high school and then sit in school from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. every day? Like, why? Does that make sense to anybody? I just, it's, it's, it hit me for so long. And then what I really didn't understand was if I'm at school all day, every day, I might got practice after school, I might have to work a job after school, and then why do I gotta do homework? That still doesn't make sense to me. I did not understand the why. We're literally in school all day, every day. Did anybody understand? I just, I, just, I just still can't fathom that. <laughs> and then, hear me out though. As I got a little older, a little more mature, got a few gray hairs in my noses, my nose, you know, <laughs> I, my noses, uh, my cognitive function started to, you know, dissipate. Uh, I realized that homework and school actually did teach me something. A little bit, not math, because I still don't understand that. But, but it did teach me discipline. School did teach me social skills, and it also taught me something I'm still trying to learn: time management, right? But all this stuff actually did have a reason, right? So it's so so important to understand the why behind why you do certain things, right? Why you feel certain ways also why you believe certain things, right? So for the next few weeks, we are going to be asking those why questions because we're starting a brand new series called Why. That is the name of the series for the next few weeks. Obviously, some of you guys will be gone. But it's okay. Um, <laughs> because we're gonna be answering these questions why. Uh, I'm not gonna spoil what all the other ones are, but they're built out. And today, we're gonna ask the first why question, which is, why pray? Why pray? Everybody ask that out loud. Why pray? Why, why pray? Why pray? Yeah, that was great inflection, I love that. Exactly. So, yeah, okay, so let me ask you. Why do we pray? We pray, or I pray to have like a personal connection with God. That's a great answer. Let's clap for that. That's a great. That's a great answer. Anybody else? Why, why pray? To talk to God about my day. To talk to God about your day. Okay, I like that. I like that. Anyone else? Why do we pray? To ask for things. To ask for things. Yes. Now, the whole reason why we're about to do this series and why I started with why pray is because I feel like it's one of those things that we do all the time. But do we ask ourselves? Why do we do this? What is the significance of actually doing things like praying and all the other things that we're gonna talk about? And uh, I'm actually gonna make this very simple for you. So if you're, having, if you're taking notes of some kind, this is the day to take notes because I actually spent time making slides for this. Okay, so the first why of prayer is communion, all right? I'm not talking about the crackers and the juice specifically. I'm talking about communion with God, 
okay? So just like you were saying, communion with God is having a relationship with God. So why do you pray? Because of communion, because of relationship. It means that you're intentionally being intimate with God, right? You're sharing in fellowship with the Lord, okay? That's why you want to pray. It means that you are intentionally seeking the Lord's presence. Okay, we've, we've heard this so much in church, I'm sure, before, like, oh, you want to seek your presence? We had that one song, your presence, you know what I'm saying, right? But then, really, like, what does that even really mean, right? So, Psalm 1611 tells us that in his presence, there is fullness of joy. Fullness of joy in the Lord's presence, right? The most common Hebrew term for presence is panim. Everybody say panim. panim. You gotta say it with the accent though. Panim. Yeah, right? Uh, that is also translated to face, right? So like, this is a panim right here. <laughs> Chris? Don't touch me, don't touch me. <laughs> so, panim means face, right? So when, in the Old Testament, in Hebrew, when it's talking about presence, it's talking about face, it's like, when you're in the presence of the Lord, it's like you're face to face with God, right? It's not literally, of course, because everybody who that happened to, they died. But <laughs> it's like, it's supposed to represent closeness and intimacy with the Lord, right? So when you're saying that, you know, you want to be in God's presence, it's like you're face to face with a friend. That makes sense? So it, do you get the picture? So when we pray, we're inviting God's presence in our lives. Psalm 37, 7, the first part of it, says, Be still in the presence of the Lord and wait patiently for him to act. Now that patiently part, it's kind of hard sometimes. Can anybody relate? Sometimes it's hard to wait on the Lord when we're praying and seeking him, right? Uh, but when we pray, right, part of that being still, as the verse talking about, is just listening to God. Now, it's a good thing to ask God for stuff. It's also a good thing to just listen to him, just hear him out, right? Um, when we pray and we ask God for direction in our lives and our schooling for us older folks, for our jobs, for our families, when we ask for guidance and wisdom, we have to be still and listen to him. All right, let me just ask you guys, how many of you guys have ever had a conversation with anybody before in your life? Right? So, if you're asking somebody a question because you want their advice, so let me just, Jacob, I'm gonna use an example, okay? Uh, Jacob, what's something you're really good at? Mm. First of all, we're tied, tied right now, but anyway. <laughs> uh, sure, talk to <laughs> Okay, Jacob, um, I really, really want to make a chicken sandwich like they do at Chick-fil-A. How would I do that? A little bit of milk wash. Actually, actually, hold up. Uh, I also want some fries too. Keep going. Some oil. Oh, oh, that reminds me. Um, last week, I was uh, in Costa Rica, <laughs> and I was drinking some delicious fruit juice. Mm, the star fruit. Mm hmm. Anyway, the Chick Fil A sandwich. Oh, uh, I don't know. See, see, now look, look what just happened right there. Did I actually get any wisdom and guidance about get, making that Chick-fil-A sandwich? Mm -hmm. Why? Don't even listen. I wasn't listening. That's true. Right? This is what happens with God when we're praying, right? We're asking God for direction, but we basically just, we just, just yap it to him. Now look, it's not, a, it's not a problem to like vent to the Lord. That's actually a good thing. But like when we're seeking direction from God, I'm trying to be like real practical right now. It's important that we just sometimes just be quiet and just listen to God. Right? We can't ask him for something and then not actually be listening for the answer, right? So this is why Psalm 85, 8 says this. I listen carefully. Everybody say carefully. Carefully. To what God the Lord is saying. For he speaks peace to his faithful people, but let them not return to their foolish ways. So look at this wisdom here. This verse says, listen carefully to what God is saying, because his wisdom brings us peace when we're faithful to him. But be careful not to fall back into foolishness 
and sin. And trust me, I know there are times where we feel super, super close to God. How many people have ever felt really close to the Lord, right? You're worshiping, you're reading the Bible, you're, you're praying, right? That's what the whole thing is about. But then we fall right back into our sinful, foolish ways. Anybody ever been there before, right? We fall right back into sin and we think, I can't really be in communion with God, right? Because I really can't pray right now because I'm too sinful. Has anybody ever felt that before? You're like, I've done too much bad. I'm, I'm not close with him. I can't talk to him, right? That actually leads us to the second reason why we pray, and that is confession. All right. So one of my favorite passages in the whole Bible is out of 1 John chapter 1, starting in verse 8, and it says, If we claim we have no sin, we are only fooling ourselves and not living in the truth. So the fact here is everybody sins. We know that's a fact, right? Everybody, even those who have a great prayer life, even those who serve in church, all that great stuff, we still have moments where we choose, where we choose sin. Can anyone admit that, right? You can feel super close to God at some point, you're really being disciplined, but then sometimes you still choose sin. Um, that is just an honest dichotomy of what's going on. But then the next verse, I love this next verse. But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. Some translations say all unrighteousness. So confession is a key aspect of prayer because it's how we practice honesty with God, right? He already knows what we did. Right? He already knows what's in our hearts, what's in our thoughts, but there's such power in confessing it to him in prayer. Amen. Amen. So not only do we confess our sins, but we also confess our worries and our anxieties. Uh, let's turn to 1 Peter 5, 7. When you get there, you got to shout out, Amen. 1 Peter 5, 7. Amen. Amen. If you're not there, say, wait. wait. Take your time, let him use you. <laughs> First Peter chapter 5, verse 7. All right, if you're there, say amen. Amen. All right, somebody read it. Nice and loud, somebody, anybody. Casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Mm. See, this verse says... Casting some of your anxieties, oh wait, no. Casting the anxieties you want to admit. What does it say? All. Mm. This other translation says, give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares about you. That's powerful, right? The Bible also says in 2 Corinthians 1 that he is the God of all comfort, right? He comforts us in any and all affliction and troubles that we may face. And when we pray and embrace God's comfort, we're able to share that comfort with others in need. Which leads us to the final why for prayer, which is intercession. Now, this is a very fancy word, but intercession, all that means, it's the action of intervening on the behalf of another person, right? So Romans 8, love Romans, Romans 8, 34 says that Jesus is interceding on our behalf to the Father. Romans 8, 26 says the Holy Spirit is also interceding for us as well. So that's why he's called our advocate, because he's in our corner, basically. And the same way that the Lord is interceding for you and me is also how he wants us to intercede for each other. Um, let's turn to James. James chapter 5. James chapter 5. Um, when you're there, shout glory. Glory. Wow, that was quick. James chapter 5. Near the end of the Bible. Glory. If you're not there, say, hold up. If you're there, say glory. Glory. All right, who wants to read? Jacoby. All right, read uh, James 5. 13 through 16. Nice and loud. Is anyone among you in trouble? 
let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous person is powerful and effective. Wow. So when someone is in need, what's our first response? Comfort them. Not quite. But that comes with it, though. Pray. 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 Right? And I love this passage. There's so much truth. Like, you could literally do a whole series just on this little section. But, like, it's talking about when someone's suffering, pray. When someone is cheerful, pray. So we don't have to pray just when stuff is bad. We, can, we should pray and thank God when things are good, right? And when people are sick, right? Stuff that seems kind of impossible out of our hands, that's true. It is out of our hands, and that's why we give it to the Lord, right? So uh, what, what about when it seems that God isn't hearing our prayers? Has anyone ever thought that or felt that before? You're praying, especially for like a sickness, for a miracle, and you're like, I feel like God's not hearing me, right? Um, 1 John 5, 14 through 15 says this. This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we asked him. So look, we don't pray to a genie and a magic lamp, all right? Shout out Robin Williams. Y'all, y'all might be too young for that, though. But uh, this passage says that God has a will or a desire for our lives that's above our own, right? We might not understand exactly what his will is, but we have to pray and trust his will. And sometimes that's hard because, like, sometimes we want answers right away. Sometimes we want the things to work out just how we want them to work out, but that's not how it always works. We are praying for God's will to be done. So we still pray in faith because we know that the answer is always yes, especially when it comes to sickness. The answer is always yes. Whether the healing is now on earth or the healing is by giving, giving your perfect heavenly body right in heaven, God's answer to healing is always yes. Right? And the Lord's will for you might not be your will for you. That's, that's something that I'm still trying to wrestle with now. The things that I want is not necessarily always what God wants for me. So when I'm praying, like, I want his will to be done. In Jesus, when he taught us how to pray in the Sermon on the Mount, he said, your will be done. That's literally part, if you ever memorize the Lord's Prayer, right? Your kingdom come, your will be done, right? On earth as it is in heaven. Even when he was facing death on the cross, he prayed to the Father, yo, I'm not trying to do this for real because this is hard. This is a huge burden. But not my will, but yours be done. So if Jesus could do that, I think we can also pray in that same vein. So why do we pray? We pray because we want God's will to be done in our lives, through our lives, for His glory alone. So when we pray, remember those three things. Let's pray for communion with God. Let's pray for closeness with the Lord, right? Let's pray and confess our sins. Let's confess our struggles and our doubts. And let's pray and intercede for those in need. Again, I got this nice little, nice little uh, screen. What's, a, what's the slide? There you go. <laughs> nice little slide for you to just nicely remember all of it, all the passages. And because I think this is such a <clears throat> practical thing. Now, obviously, I'm sure you can think of all sorts of other reasons to pray. I just tried to put them in nice, neat little boxes for you. Because I think these are the pillars of prayer, right? When, when I'm talking about, I'm kind of like outro right now. When it comes to communion, right, it's not always about getting stuff from him. It's not about trying to make it seem like we're so super spiritual. Like, we're just trying to be close with our friend, 
right? That's the, what, the word in Hebrew, remember what it is? What is it? Face. Right, it means face, right? I was trying to see if anyone would try to say it in Hebrew. Anyway, but it means face, like you're trying to be face to face with your, with your friend, right? And the confession, that's like the hardest part, really, because we know he's so holy, we're just saying about it, like, he's holy forever, he's so, the angels are gonna be crying this for eternity, and sometimes it's hard for us to admit, yeah, I'm not perfect, right? But he wants us to confess. And then lastly, of course, intercession. Don't give up on the power of prayer. Don't give up praying for, interceding for those who are in need because people should do that for you too. Your family, your brothers and sisters in Christ should do that for you. So we're actually going to do that tonight. I want this to be, again, very practical. I want, you to want us to practice what we have learned tonight. So we're going to take... 15 minutes to do exactly this. All right, so for the first, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play some nice atmospheric music in the background so you're not distracted with the silence. So for the first five minutes, we're gonna just thank God for who he is, thank him for providing for us, you know, for salvation, which is the greatest thing we could ever achieve, right? We can ever be given, I should say. Uh, just for five minutes, I want you to just think of things to thank God for just be in communion with the Lord, right? Then I'm, I'm gonna guide you through this too. So now I'm not about to just let you free for 15 minutes. I'm gonna guide you through it. Then the, for the next five minutes, I want you to confess to God. So tell Him what you're worried about. If you're like, bro, I'm leaving for college tomorrow. I am really am anxious about it, right? You can tell Him that. Confess your sin to Him. Confess what you need to repent for, because you know that He is going to give you the strength to overcome your sin. So confess your sin. And then for the last five-ish minutes, I put an ish on that one, we're gonna get in groups of two. I don't want it to be bigger than two because I want it to be close, but groups of two and pray for each other's needs, right? Intercede on each other's behalf. So if you're sick, or you know somebody who's sick, you're going through a, you know, a struggle or something, or you have a family who's going through something, this is the time to intercede for one another. Does that make sense? So it should be a good, rich time praying in the Lord's presence. So I'm going to, hopefully this is still connected to my phone. Pray a little, oh, it's not. Oh, here we go. Pray a little atmospheric music here. And I'm just gonna start us off with a little prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the gift of prayer. Lord, that we know that we can boldly approach your throne of grace because you have torn the veil that we can communicate with you and be in constant communion with you constantly confess to you and know that you're going to forgive us and that you give us the authority and the power to intercede on behalf of our fellow loved ones our fellow believers i just pray that tonight just for this short amount of time lord that we can set a precedent set a rhythm for the rest of the year and the rest of our lives to really prioritize prayer and Lord, as we continue on in the fall and ask some of these hard questions of why, why we do certain things, why we believe certain things, I pray that your word can be at the focal point of it, that uh, Jesus, you will be at the center of everything we do. We pray all this in Jesus' name, amen. Hey, it's our hope and our prayer that these videos will encourage you in your faith every single day. If they're doing so, how about you like, you share, you subscribe. Hey, and if you're ever in the Northeast Ohio area, stop by Calvary Assembly of God. Sundays, worship with us. Let's connect with God, His presence, and His people together.